So the main parts of the pull cam system are the control box with the touchscreen monitor, uh, the head of the pull cam that houses the camera and the GPS. Uh, there's a main data cable that goes from the control box up to the camera head. And then lastly is the pole here. And there's a connector on the top of the pole that receives the bottom of the, the head of the, the pole cam. So to get things set up, uh, the first thing to do is to connect up the GPS and the camera to the uh, pole cam head. So the first thing you want to do is decide at which camera angle you want to, um, to take pictures at. Um, generally for the 24 millimeter lens that's on the camera natively, um, about 30 degrees is a good balance of kind of field of view and coverage. Um, if you go up to zero, you'll be looking out horizontally, and that'll be good for certain things, but um, for photos on high, 30 degrees is a good place to start, at least. Um, if you did want to change the, the angle of the camera, you can pull out these two retaining pins on either side, loosen up the, the nuts here, the thumb nuts on either side, and the the cradle in the middle will now swing freely and you can line up um, the retaining pins with whatever angle uh, you want. And there's a, on the one side, there's a list of angles uh, with the corresponding holes are labeled. So I'm going to set this back to 30 degrees, push in the retaining pin on both sides and tighten up these thumb screws. So to mount the camera, um, it's got a uh, tripod plate on the bottom that mates with the, the um, tripod connector uh, in the, the frame. And all you have to do is put the camera in so that it would eventually be looking down. Okay, and then the knob of the uh, the retainer here is, is at the back. And on the, the tripod connector and on the, the retainer here are a series of kind of lines or gradations. Um, and you want to line up the tripod connector on the zero mark. And then you can tighten down on the, the thumb screw here at the back to, to lock in the camera. So the camera's in there nice and tight. The next thing we need to do is actually hook up the camera to the USB connection that will eventually go down to the control box here. And so to do that, we'll use this uh, for this um, Canon T6i is a, is a standard um, micro USB connector. So a, an A connector on one end and then a micro B on the other. And so we'll the main uh, USB connection here is on the side. And so the, the A plug will go in there. So line that up and, and plug that in. And then because this is a little bit of a longer cord, I usually take it kind of around the back of the frame, pull it out the front and kind of circle back to the uh, camera's USB connection here on this side access port. And so this only goes in one way. So you can plug that in and just make sure that's kind of securely in there and won't wiggle around too much. Okay, and then double check that the, the cord isn't in the way of the lens. It shouldn't be. Okay. So the next thing to do is to connect up the GPS on the top. There's a big uh, 5 8 screw on the top, which is the standard GPS uh, mounting hardware. And so we can do that by putting the head down. And one thing you'll notice about this is that the, the, the connection for the wire doesn't allow you to put it down flat like this. But if you put it down on its face, there's basically little kickstands that keep the camera off the ground. So that's a good way to um, 
kind of store the camera head while you're not using it. And so the, the GPS, again, has a big brass uh, threaded insert on the bottom here. And so what we'll do to connect this up is if you put your kind of one of your middle fingers underneath to kind of hold that screw as you kind of get the GPS started and then turn it on and righty tighty lefty loosey as with all, all screw things. And what you'll notice is that it doesn't won't tighten all the way down and the thing we'll need to do is use this big uh, 3 8 uh, Allen wrench to get underneath and tighten up the, the head of that screw. So you'll see that the, the screw is underneath here and if you use the long ball end of the Allen wrench you can get it in there and hold on to the GPS and you can tighten up that screw. It only takes about a quarter turn. You don't have to go that tight but you just want to make sure grab the GPS head and make sure that it's tight on there. So that's the head of the GPS and the camera uh, ready to go. The next thing we'll do is set up the, uh, the control box onto the pole. And this will take, um, this will take some adjustment once you actually, once we actually get it up and running. But, um, on the pole, there are uh, four main sections, okay? And so we're going to mount the control box on the lowest section just below this, this lowest uh, kind of ferrule or, or compression nut at the bottom. And so the control box has on the back of it a, a nice big uh, claw mount. So the claw back here is what holds onto the pole. And then the arm here is adjustable so that you can actually position the, the control box in whatever direction you want. So if you loosen up that main knob here, you can adjust around the, the claw. And then eventually, once we get it connected up to the pole, we can adjust the, the kind of angle and tilt of the, uh, the control box as well. So for now, we're gonna, we'll go ahead and, and get this off to one side and tighten up the, the knob here so that everything's stable. And then what we'll do is basically just loosen up the claw with the retaining screw here. You may have to push it down to open it up. And all you're gonna do is get that on to the pole and then tighten up that retaining screw at the back, kind of all the way until it's nice and tight on the pole. You don't have to over tighten it, but again, you want it to be secure. So again, you can kind of grab onto it and wiggle it and make sure that it's not gonna come loose. It, most of the time with just thumb tight on this screw should be fine. And then next thing you can do is, is kind of roughly position the screen. So if you unlock that main knob on the arm, you can kind of tilt the box kind of up and towards you um, so that it's kind of square to the pole and kind of square to you as the user. So with that, we're, we've got the, the control box on the pole and now we're ready to go ahead and hook up the, uh, the control cable between the box and the head. Okay, so now we can mount the camera head onto the pole and connect the control box to the head with the control cable. And so to do that, we're going to use the, the big hole that has kind of four keyways on it. On the bottom of the head will fit on top of the pole. And so the, the best way to kind of align these uh, so that nothing gets interf nothing nothing interferes is to have the uh, control cable connector opposite the the big bulky side of the 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 pull top clamp here. And so all you have to do is put that on uh, so that the keyways line up and the whole thing should slide down. 
And then at the top here, there'll be a retaining pin that you can slide in there to, to kind of hold the head uh, more securely onto the, the top of the pole. So the next thing is to kind of unwrap the control cable. This control cable is enough for the full height of the pole. You may or may not actually need that. But this has a kind of Velcro um, strap on it. And the, the ends of the cable don't actually matter. Uh, either end can work up or down. Uh, but generally, I try to keep the, the Velcro strap on the bottom end because that Velcro slap, strap can slide up and you can wrap that around the pole to, to help control the cable uh, in the wind as you're, as you're surveying. So you can take the, the bottom of the cable here and if you look in the end straight on, you'll see a little bit of a, a plastic nub that sticks down on one side of that connector. That's the key that kind of uh, keys up to the, the connector on the control box here. And so on the control box, the, the key position is towards the back. And so all you have to do is take the cable, line up those two keys, and you should kind of feel the, the connector kind of slot into the, um, that, the, the, uh, the control box there. Now, it's a screw connection, so you do have to kind of get it aligned so it's perpendicular to the, the connector. And then turn uh, with your kind of thumb and forefinger the bottom uh, silver kind of thumb ring here to tighten up the connection. And you just have to go again finger tight on this. You don't want to go, you, wanna, you don't want to over tighten that. If you do need some help to get that started, the way to kind of um, help is to kind of hold the, the back and kind of push down as you're turning. So once you have that connected up, you can grab the other end of the control cable. And again, there's the, the key and match it up to its, its kind of mate on the control box or on the, the camera head. And again, you may, want, you may need to hold on to the, the back of the cable here and push in as you're turning the silver ring here so that you can get that whole uh, the connector started up there and, and screwed in tight. And so once you have those two connected up, you're going to have a lot of excess cable uh, before you extend the pole up. And so my suggestion is to kind of coil this back up. You can use that Velcro strap to kind of secure it. And then um, generally what I do is, is kind of hang it behind the control box on the, the big uh, knob on the arm. And that keeps it out of the way for now. To turn on the whole system, the order of operations is to turn on the GPS first then the camera, and then the control box. So to turn on the GPS, you need to rotate it around until you find the big power button. And you'll push and hold that until the lights flash on, and then you can release that. You'll see that the, there's a little status indicator here that kind of scrolls apart, or scrolls along that's, that's indicating that it's searching for satellites. So that's on. And then you can come to the camera and just go to the power switch on the camera. Just flip it to the on position. And this is a good time also to take off the lens cap so that you don't forget that uh, up in the air. So camera's on, lens cap's off, GPS is on. Now we can come to the control box and turn on the control box. And so on the very top of the control box next to the, um, the control cable is a, the big power, main power switch. And so there's an off position with an O and an on position with an I. So we'll flip it to the I position to turn the whole system on. And on the screen you should notice um, kind of a big colorful splash screen and then some boot up information. On the left hand side of the screen over here is the battery indicator. So if you've charged this recently, it should be uh, 
four little light dots there to indicate that you're fully charged. And so once you get to the main screen here, you'll launch the, the main software. Okay, to set up the GPS for post-process kinematic uh, collection, we're gonna need to connect to its Wi-Fi hotspot. And so on your device, you can go into your internet settings and go to the uh, Wi-Fi and look for the hotspot for the specific GPS that we're using. In this case, it, you can see it's Reach RS2, and the one that I'm using is F5D7. So we'll connect to it. Some devices may um, yell at you about the device not having internet connectivity and asking if you want to stay connected. And on my Android, you can see the notification here. And if this is the case, you'll say yes. And so there's two ways that we can access the device. One is through the ReachU3 app, which works better if you're going to be doing surveying with the GPS connected to the hotspot on your phone rather than your phone connecting to the hotspot on the GPS. To access it via IP, open your browser, open a new tab, and then you can type in the IP address for the, the unit is 192.168.42.1. Hit enter. You should see an MLED splash screen here and then you should see kind of the, the general status window of the unit here. So on this first page, you'll see the types of satellites, its approximate position, um, whether it's, it's positioning mode, in this case we're in kinematic mode, and then the solution status can be single, float RTK, fixed RTK. Single is, is what we're generally looking for when we're doing post-processing kinematic. So in order to do the, the PPK processing, we're gonna to need to go into the logging settings. So we'll hit the menu in the upper right, go to logging. And then on the logging page, there's several things that we can log uh, directly onto the GPS unit itself. But the, the main one that we're interested in is just the raw data at the top. So to start a recording for a day or a session, you can hit that start recording and then you will get a, a switch in the icon to be um, a little recording icon. And that's all you need to do. You can disconnect from the unit and switch your Wi-Fi back off or back to another, another network. Um, and when you're done for the day or with your session, if you power off the receiver, it'll automatically stop that log file and you don't have to log back in to the unit and hit the stop button. It'll automatically stop if you turn off the receiver. But if you do stop the receiver by powering it off, when you get back at the end of the day, you will have to start the receiver back up and reconnect in the same way that we just did. And if you get back to this logging file or logging settings, you can go down to the bottom of the page and see all of the available logs uh, that are stored on the device. And they go from newest at the top to oldest at the bottom. And all you need to do uh, for post-processing is just download that raw data file by hitting the little download icon on the right side of the file. And it will download it directly to your phone, usually to your downloads folder. And then from there, you can share it with yourself um, in whatever way you like. You can transfer it to Dropbox or email it to yourself if the file size is small enough. Um, if you can connect it up to a computer and transfer it kind of mass storage uh, direct from your phone, there's lots of different ways to do it. But this is the only kind of file you need uh, directly from the receiver at the end of the day. This is the desktop that you'll eventually land on after the boot screens. And the things on the desktop here that you can see are, um, you should see uh, two camera icons if the camera is connect connected properly. You don't have to do anything with these right now. There's a folder that links to the data folder where your, all the data are stored. And then the main program runs off this uh, shell file here, polcam underscore mlid. So to start the software, all you need to do is tap on the, uh, the shell file here. 
and the next um, kind of window to open up is where do you want to execute it and we're going to always execute in terminal and so you'll see a command window will pop up with some um, kind of booting text for the software and eventually the uh, graphical user interface will show up and so to walk you through the, the graphical user interface here, so you'll start in the upper left-hand corner here with setting up and calibrating the IMU. Once that's complete, you can start, you can um, scan for and connect to the MLED GPS that you've installed on the top. And once those two are connected, you'll be able to um, start the main data collection uh, over here on the right-hand side. So to set up and calibrate the IMU, uh, you need the, the pole cam set up and ready to go. And um, I'll demonstrate how to do that next. But you'll click the set up IMU button. Um, you'll wanna hold on for just a second. And as you calibrate, you'll notice that the different colors of the different uh, sensors on the IMU will start to change colors and eventually what you want to do is get them all to be green. And once you get them all green you will get a confirmation of the IMU is calibrated uh, with a little sound and a little pop-up window that will tell you that the IMU is properly calibrated. So once you hear that sound and get the little pop-up window, you can uh, put the camera back upright and you'll click on the uh, IMU calibrated OK button here to clear that screen. So once you've hit the calibrate IMU button on the control screen, what you're going to do is just hold the, hold the camera as still as possible until the G value on the uh, the little IMU number section there turns green. And once the G value turns green with the camera still, the way that to calibrate the, the whole IMU is to tilt the camera on its side. And usually I start with the camera facing up and just hold that for five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, and then turn it 45 degrees and hold that for five seconds and turn it for 45 degrees for another five seconds and keep going like that until you've come all the way back around with the camera facing back up again. So at this point, what you can actually do is look down at your control box and see um, if you've heard the noise that it's calibrated, you're done. If you haven't heard the noise, you can look and see if it needs more calibration, which it might likely do. And the easiest way to achieve that is just to take the same kind of positions in reverse. So keep going 45 degrees back around until you hear the ding of the IMU corrected um, confirmation on the control box. And then next we will um, scan for and connect to the GPS. So once we're ready to connect our GPS, um, we'll, we'll hit the, uh, the number two button here, which is scan Bluetooth. And so this will take a second to uh, look for already uh, paired Bluetooth um, devices and the GPS should be paired with your uh, Raspberry Pi. And so you'll see that it has found one Bluetooth device up here in the information screen and that device, the Reach RS2, uh, appears in this drop down here. And so you can say connect and that will connect to the RS2 and you should end up with a GPS OK uh, message here in the information section and you should see your latitude, longitude, altitude and then some accuracy statistics uh, pop up here and kind of update on a regular basis. Um, 
so the next kind of couple things to, to look out for here, um, up in the upper right here is the GPS status indicator. So what uh, kind of accuracy the GPS has. Um, if you're using this solely in PPK mode, uh, that should just be in single or DGPS mode. Um, if you're using network RTK, you'll see it either in float RTK or fixed once it fixed RTK once it has a, a lock on the the satellites and the base station. So the only things the other things that you need to set up before you get started are what camera angle you have um, your camera set at. So I'm gonna I usually have mine set at 30 degrees, but you can look on the side of the, the head of the, the camera to see what angle you're set at. And then the pole height is the, the pole height for the entire um, contraption. So from the base of the pole up to the, the base of the, the camera. And so 4.8 meters is the entire length of the pole fully extended. Generally, you may not have it all the way up that high just for stability reasons, or you may not need to go that high. And so you can use the little arrows here up and down to get um, the proper pole height um, mapped in. If you need more accurate than just one decimal place, there's a way to edit the data file after uh, collection and uh, before you do your post-processing. So the only other things down here are the start button, which will get us started. And then there are two uh, preview buttons here. One is a checkbox that you can check if you want to see little thumbnail previews of the photos as you go. And then the other is uh, after you've taken a picture, if you'd like to review the full resolution preview, you can click this button um, for a full resolution preview. So once we're all set up, we've got the IMU calibrated, the GPS connected, set our camera angle and our pole height. We can go ahead and hit the start button. So once you hit the start button, it'll take a second, it'll make some GPS measurements, and it'll connect to the camera and take the first picture. And so you should hear all of, uh, should either hear or feel the camera kind of uh, trigger when you hit this button for the first time. Okay, and it takes a second for the first um, picture to kind of initiate the data file because uh, it uses the, the GPS readings to get date and timestamps. So once you hear kind of the, the success, the ding sound, um, you'll see in the, in the info section here the image name of our last image and the total number of photos that we've taken. And so you can see the preview screen is blank right now because I don't have the preview photos button checked. But if you don't have that checked, you can go ahead and start with your, your data collection or your capture for, the, for that specific site. And so each time you want to move and take a picture, you just hit the capture button again. And so the, the, the intermediate beeps are just kind of um, keys in the code for what's going on. They're not that important, but the final um, kind of coin or ding sound at the end means you can move on to your next picture. So just to give you an example of the, the preview functions, if you do have preview photos checked, um, when you hit the capture button, the camera will fire and download a low resolution preview kind of thumbnail of the the scene that you just shot this is my messy office that you're seeing right now but you get the idea so after you've taken a photo the the picture here is is quite low resolution but it'll give you an idea of what you've just taken a picture of so that you can kind of line up your next shot like i said if you do want to capture a full resolution preview or view a full resolution preview, you can hit the full resolution preview and it'll take a second to download the full image file. To get the whole thing started, um, again, you'll hit the start button to take the initial picture and establish the log file. So if we hit the start button, you'll hear the camera trigger and feel it in the pole. 
And I usually do this with the pole retracted so that if anything does go wrong, I don't have to bring the pole all the way back down. And so once we get confirmation that the first picture has been taken and the log file has been established, now we can go ahead and get the, the pole up in the air. And so the, the best way to do this is to kind of un, uh, unwrap the, the cable so that it's lying loose kind of on the ground. Um, usually I try to get this kind of behind the camera head and the, the control box. And then you can start raising up the pole in sections. And so if you want to do the entire length, you can start with the, the, the smallest one. But is to, to grab the ferrule that you want to unscrew of the section and twist it to the left to, to loosen it. And then you can raise it up until it gets to, there's a stop in the bottom. And then you turn it to the right to lock it. And you want to make sure that that's really tight. On this middle, or the, this upper section, there is a little bit of a Velcro strap on here that you can use to just kind of retain the, the, the cable there. And then you can raise up the next section, okay, until you get up to the bottom of that one and lock that one in. And now, likely what's gonna be uh, happen is that the camera and the control box are not gonna be kind of aligned properly. And so you want the control box to be kind of facing, uh, looking in the same direction, or you wanna be looking at the control box that's looking kind of in the direction that the camera is facing. And so in this case, um, right now I've turned the camera away from me, so it's looking that way. The control box isn't in the right orientation because I wanna be able to look at it in the same kind of direction. And so now we can just loosen up the claw on the pole just a little bit, okay? And just rotate that around until we get it to be in the right orientation, lock down the claw. And now the, we can see the control box and the camera is looking in the same direction. And so then if you have a little bit of extra cable here, you can go ahead and um, kind of coil that up just so it's not dragging in the grass. And again, here's where you can use that little Velcro strap that's on here. You can slide it around. And usually I just wrap the whole kind of cable mess around the pole right about there to keep it kind of out of the way. And so now you're ready to go ahead and start taking your pictures with the pole extended all the way up. So the best way to do this kind of from a, a practical standpoint is to, you want to try to take the camera or the pictures as level as you possibly can, or the, so the pole is, is plumb, okay? And then the camera head is level. So usually I, I try to grab onto the pole up higher and that gives you a little bit more kind of leverage on the pole and stability. And then your right hand can be free to tap the capture button on the control box. So you'll hit capture, you'll hear some, some, some boops and beeps, and eventually a ding. And the ding means that you can, you can move on to your next uh, photo. And so again, to move this once it's extended all the way up is a little bit of a trick, but usually I switch hands and kind of grab higher up with my right hand and a little bit lower with my left hand and lift up the pole kind of vertically and then you can walk with it as far forward as you need to in order to get your next pictures. So once you do that, you can lower the whole thing, switch hands, hit capture, take the pictures, and then switch hands. If you're not comfortable switching hands, your right hand can go down low again. And just the idea is here is just to lift straight up and walk forward with the camera and then put it straight down kind of wait for it to settle a little bit, and then you can capture the next picture. What you don't want to do while you're walking is get the, the camera kind of tilted way back like this so that the pole's kind of facing forward and the camera's leaning way back. That's just a, that's a recipe for kind of either the pole to break or the camera to, to get damaged. 
And same, similarly, if you go forward, it becomes really, really unstable really quickly. And so the best kind of practice, again, when you're moving is to have kind of one hand high and one hand low and just lift straight up, walk forward, put the camera down, and then you can take your pictures. Okay, once you're done taking pictures and you want to take down the pole camera setup, you want to retract the pole in its different sections. So again, you can turn to the left to loosen and then lower each section in turn until you're back down at the bottom like this. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and close the, the graphical user interface for the, the software. So once you hit the close button, you'll go back to the desktop and at this point, you could download the data, but it's, it's a little bit easier to, to download the data once you're back in, in the lab or at camp. And so at this point, what you can do is just hit the, the start uh, button, the little Raspberry Pi icon in the top left. Open up the, the little Raspberry Pi or uh, log out, here, shut down, menu. and then you're going to wait for out. about five seconds. The screen That's will go it. blank. Hit shut down. And after that, then you can hit the, the, the main blank. power switch on the top to turn the whole system off. Now, after you do that, it's good to turn off the camera. So you can flip the camera switch. If you've got the lens cap handy, you can go ahead and put the lens cap back on. And then go ahead and push and hold the power button on the GPS to turn the GPS off as well. So that you'll, you'll see that, that will, the lights on the front here will go blank, meaning that that's off as well. So you don't necessarily have to tear down the whole system from start to finish every time if you're going to go out, back out to use it. Um, I often will leave it in this configuration and just coil up the, the control cable around the base here and just leave it as one piece. Um, but if you do need to take it apart for some reason, again, you can take off. The easiest way is to, to, to remove the control cable from the head. You can usually leave it uh, connected to the control box, remove the retaining pin off the top, and then you can just remove the whole head off and work on this on the table if you need to remove the GPS or, or change out the camera.